Alright, so this is going to be another movie review. Uh, this one's called Law of Desire. This is a Pedro Amaldavar flick from 1987. Uh, in general, I dislike Pedro Amaldavar. I, um, I thought his movies from 2004 and until now are pretty good. But prior to that, they suck. Uh, this one is an exception. I was surprised. Uh, this movie is gay, and um, I don't know if Amaldovar is uh, the originator of this uh, whole genre called gay noir, but uh, yeah, I saw it in Bad Education, I saw it in uh, Law of Desire. It's kind of an interesting title, too. Um, and it's got a pretty good looking uh transsexual from Spain I guess uh, yeah so this one has a young looking Antonio Banderas playing a gay dude and I'm not sure why it got a NC-17 rating um, it's uh, I mean it shows Antonio's dingling it shows the other gay dude Pablo's dingling but and, but other than that all the uh, gay sex is all off screen so What's the big deal? I don't know. Beats me. Um, anyway, so it's about this uh, gay film director. It could be autobiographical. I don't know. Um, maybe it is. Uh, since uh, Amaldovar is gay too. But um, anyway, the gay filmmaker Pablo, he. Um, He's like doing coke and he's um, he's doing the uh, the doo doo walls on uh, on this this other gay uh, dude named Juan. He's going up in those doo doo walls. Uh, uh, must hurt. Uh, he must feel butt hurt afterwards. But uh, or or maybe they're not even having gay sex they're just kind of a uh, dry humping I don't know but um, I guess they're sort of uh, boyfriends and uh, oh I should say the uh, the gay film director is egotistical so that's that's the only reason why I, I, I say that it may be autobiographical because this Amalda Amaldavar dude seems to be egotistical as well um, that's just my perception but anyway, um, so but these two boyfriends, they, uh, they split up, I guess. Um, Juan has to go to some lighthouse uh, to be a bartender. I'm not exactly sure what that's all about. And, um, and so, uh, oh, I should say Pablo has a transsexual sister. That's that's what what I meant when I mentioned the uh, good-looking transsexual on this. Um, um, another thing I don't understand about this movie: uh, why is the transsexual sister living with the little girl? Uh, that part I didn't didn't quite understand. Um, and why is there another transsexual-looking? Uh, woman who comes on the set when she's um, when she's doing some kind of play uh, that Pablo originated <coughs> and it looks like some kind of cocteau play I'm not sure what it's, that's even more confusing anyway um, I'm di digressing a bit so um so Juan leaves, uh, Antonio shows up, he's just playing video games, and uh, where, uh, where Pablo likes to hang out. And they bump into each other, um, at first Antonio does, says he doesn't like to sleep with guys, and they end up doing the um, for real uh, due to wall sex, and uh, requires some Vaseline. And, uh, 
Yeah, then uh, Antonio is obsessed with this dude, Pablo. Uh, Pablo doesn't really like to be attached to his boyfriend, so... Uh, so he plans on seeing Juan. He's like writing him love letters. Uh, he's writing love letters to uh, to uh, Antonio at the same time under the name Laura P. So that his mom won't read him, or she'll just think it's some broad instead of uh, a gay guy. Um, then. Uh, then all of a sudden Antonio gets hella pissed. Like he, he doesn't like being ignored, I guess. And he goes and uh throws Juan over the cliff at the lighthouse and um, Juan's dead, so uh Antonio murdered Juan is kind of like a jealousy love triangle deal. And um and then the most bizarre thing happens. Uh, uh, I didn't understand this part either. Uh, so uh, so I guess uh, Pablo shows up. He finds out that Juan is dead. Um, and he knows who killed him too. It was Antonio. So he goes to see Antonio. Antonio admits everything and um oh my mom's calling excuse me oh I'll call I'll, I'll call back mom I gotta finish this video anyway um so Antonio admit, admits that he killed um Juan and um Pablo gets pissed he calls him a murderer he goes driving off like the police are following him because uh, actually uh, uh, Antonio M and uh, Pablo both wore the same shirt and a piece of this shirt um, arrived at the murder scene um, so that's why the cops are following uh, Pablo instead of uh, Antonio um, and they're confused by the Laura P letters. Uh, so it's like Keystone Cops. Uh, when the cops arrive at, um, when the cops arrive at uh, Antonio's, I mean Pablo's. When the cops arrive at Pablo's uh, apartment, excuse me, they start doing coke, and uh, the younger cop doesn't know what he's doing. He uh, slaps a transsexual and transsexual uh, hits him like uh, clubs him with the with the big manly fist, and uh, the part was kind of funny. But um, anyway, the the part that confused me was um, the Pablo dude just for no reason smacks a tree and has amnesia. Uh, meanwhile. Um, Antonio is uh is like uh having that, uh sex with uh having gay sex with uh the transsexual. Uh presumably doing them in the do do walls or doing her in the do the walls. Um so that's happening while um while all this amnesia is taking place. Then uh suddenly um Pablo snaps out of his am amnesia. He's in the hospital with a broken leg. Can't remember anything. All of a sudden, he snaps out of it. And uh, that's about where the ending is. It's pretty good noir. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot like um, Bad Education. Uh, so, good movie. Um, I thought the first 45 minutes was kind of boring, but uh, I guess it was just a build up, and I didn't quite understand who all these characters were. Um, but if, if he, anybody can fill me in on uh, what the heck uh, was going on with the little girl and um, that other transsexual looking woman, um, yeah, let me know. That part was kind of confusing to me. Okay, uh, but I gave it five stars on Netflix, and um, 
to watch another Maldivar movie now from around the same time with Antonio Banderas. Um, it's called um, Matador or something like that. I later, so I'm going to call my mom now. Later.